Hi guys, welcome back to the Tesla Model S P85 Plus. Um, we've already reviewed this car, but it's uh, been very popular and for good reason. It's a very interesting car, especially in Australia. There's no other fully electric performance sedan like this on sale. So Tesla is an American company. It's not owned by any other automotive giant like Volkswagen Group or Fiat. Chrysler or anything like that. It's its own company, which means it's a, this is a completely unique car. It's got some switch gear borrowed from Mercedes-Benz, but apart from that, it's, it's completely unique. Underneath is a flat sandwich chassis with, with all batteries in the middle of it. Then it's got air coil suspension at all four corners. There's no other sports luxury sedan on sale at the moment that has this arrangement. Um, 310 kilowatts which is available the moment you put your foot into the accelerator pedal. It's got performance brakes, multi-piston calipers, huge 21 inch wheels and a very low profile. Looks, the body looks very very low and sporty. You can raise and, and lower the suspension electronically of course. Um, you'll notice the chrome door handles that are completely flush for aerodynamic benefits and then they just pop out automatically as you come close to the car. The moment you jump inside there's no ignition as such. The car is already set to your profile so this is already set. It's got my air conditioning already set the moment I step in. So the Mercedes-Benz switchgear we're talking about, just the, just the column stalks and, and the um, power window buttons over there on the door. Sitting centre in the dash is this huge touchscreen. It's probably the biggest touchscreen you can get in a production car. It controls everything. So you've got internet radio, sat nav, which you can change to a full maps, full screen map display, cameras to look through. You can go through your energy consumption, instant range, and then you've got car controls. So you can lower the suspension here. You can also pick three different steering modes just to change the sort of weight sensitivity and then you've got this creep function which so in an automatic car or a normal conventional automatic car the transmission works on a centrifugal clutch and it will just move forward that little bit when you take your foot off the brake and off the accelerator whereas in an electric car if you take your foot off the brake and off the accelerator you're getting nothing so the car won't move so they've put this introduce this creep function that just pushes the car along a little bit just to make you a bit more familiar with the with an automatic car. It's a nice touch. You've got regenerative braking so when you take your foot off the accelerator and you're rolling down a hill um, if you put it in the standard default mode there's some load that feels like the brakes are on just a little bit and it recharges the batteries. You can turn that off so it will just roll like it's an automatic um, you know in a higher gear. And then down the bottom you've got all your climate and your, your volume. Inside you've got plenty of room, thanks to the, the, the low chassis. Look at all this space you've got here. They, they probably could have done a better job with some boxes or dividing that up. If you put your phone there it's just going to slide. But you've got so much room, you've got all this freedom. And the seats are semi-sporty, they hug you in a bit in the, in the hips and then they're just flat along the bottom. Touches of carbon fibre and then this nice sort of suede trimming along the dash. We'll check out the back seat. So the first thing you'll notice is that the lack of a, a transmission tunnel in the middle there. Uh, that's because the, the chassis is so compact and it's got that sandwich layout. So you can move your feet around, you, you can have seating in the middle and not be, you know, have your knees in your in your face. Then you've got dual sunroofs to uh, sort of open up the atmosphere even more. But sitting from here you can see the size of that huge screen on the dash. It's amazing. Air vent controls for the back. It's a comfortable place back here. If anything it might feel a little bit low and the roof, if you're, if you're tall, you'd probably headbutt the, the roof there. So boot space, you've got one boot at the front, which you just tap the uh, little key 
it's like a little matchbox car. You've got reasonable room in the front there, it goes a bit further back. Then you've got a conventional boot at the back as well. Fully electric of course. This goes even deeper. We'll take it for a drive, it's just starting to rain now. So to start the car, all you do is put your foot on the brake and it's automatically ready to go. Then you just move the lever into drive and it will start moving forward. It's always interesting when you first drive off, it's sort of eerily quiet. It makes you wonder, is the engine started? But there's of course no engine. So it's completely silent. Visibility is good. You've got fairly thick C pillars in the back. I'm not sure if you can see those. But through the front end, you're not really going to have any troubles. A little bit of wheel spin there as you get up to speed. That was with about a quarter of throttle. So you've got immense torque. You do have to be wary of that, especially in the wet. But that'll soon change with the P85D, which arrives in Australia in June, July. That's uh, got 515 kilowatts compared with this 310 um, with an electric motor in the front at the front axle doing the same thing as what this is doing in the, at the back. So it's very flat, neutral handling. It doesn't feel quite as, as chuckable as a BMW 5 Series or a Lexus GS. Um, and in that sense, you couldn't really drift it around corners or anything like that if you're on the track. It feels more at home if it's just planted solid on the ground. It feels like it's a train just going around corners. It's just completely flat. It does feel heavy, um, but you can feel that the weight is all low down, so there's a low center of gravity. And then the immense power and torque uh, completely you know, negates the weight. It doesn't, doesn't matter how heavy it is. Even just going up little hills, you can just prod the accelerator a little bit and it'll just take off. slow down a bit and show you the acceleration so we're going 40 kilometers an hour I'll push the throttle halfway for a few seconds and it's pretty much 100 kilometers an hour with a bit of wheel spin it's immense it, it really accelerates uh, 0 to 104.4 seconds it really accelerates like a proper sports car um, but the sensation of speed is completely different it feels like it does 0 to 100 in, in 4 seconds flat because of the way it just builds speed from from 0 RPM this is a really fun car in a, in a different way compared with the BMW or a Lexus or a Mercedes it's, uh, it, the handling isn't as engaging it's still as capable but it's just not as engaging but it brings different kinds of excitement to the table because it's got no no revs no engine revs and you've got instant torque and of course it chews no petrol so you don't have to visit the petrol station the only thing that would make it better is just maybe a bit less weight and a suspension system that provides a bit more give a bit more travel so you can throw the weight around. In this you can't really throw the weight around. The weight is just firmly planted low down and that's, that's it. It's very good handling, very flat, no body roll, but it's perhaps not as, as chuckable. But then you think, who cares? I just want to slow down again and give it full acceleration. Oh. It actually pushes your organs back, it pushes your head back, you can't help it. 
So having that immense torque uh, straight off the line is actually it's it's a bit safer without being dangerous. So say you need to pull out of a, a street like this, the speed limits are 80 kilometres an hour. So you just give it sort of a quarter of a throttle. It'll start spinning a little bit, and then you're at 80 kilometres an hour straight away, completely effort, effortless. Prices for the P85 Plus are around the 135,000 mark, which is quite steep, but comparatively, it's not too bad. Um, all cars are sort of overpriced in, in Australia, in my opinion. So if you compare it against the equivalent BMW or Audi, you, you're looking at sort of the BMW 535i or something like that, which is priced very similar. But in this, you get more technology, um, and if not more luxury. A full charge is about 500 kilometres, they say, so that's enough to get you to work and back a fair few times, depending on how far you live from work. And there we have it. It's remembered the driveway was uh, quite steep and uh, it raised its nose automatically. So would you buy this car? Well, personally I would definitely buy it. It's, um, it's priced comparatively, it's, it's steep, but for the technology you get in this car, it's pretty good and especially when you factor it up against some of the petrol powered rivals that don't come with you know features such as this massive screen and the, the fully digital instrument cluster and internet radio and things like that and then of course you, you've also got to offset the fact that you don't ever have to go to the petrol station you could charge this once a week and uh, have a you know normal commute to work every day and not have to go to the petrol station so this morning we done about 100 kilometers and the range went down by about 140 kilometers. So it's about 40 kilometers out, which is not too bad considering we've done a bit of, you know, spirited driving through the mountain and done a lot of uphill, uphill driving and a um, couple of acceleration stints as well. That's the, um, the Model S P85 Plus. We look forward to the P85D with the uh, astonishing acceleration and four-wheel drive grip uh, that's coming later on in the year as we said thanks for watching once again we'll continue doing point of view reviews for uh, especially the sports cars that we review on the site don't forget to head over to performancedrive.com.au to check out all the latest news and reviews